what's going on everybody and welcome back to another video today's topic is going to be so good this is a topic that i really love to talk about and it's something you'll probably hear a lot throughout life pretty much everybody talks about wanting to be financially stable but i think i hear it a lot more when it comes to the young adult crowd i'm talking between 18 and 30 years old it could be that they just graduated from school they just moved out they just got their first job and now they just want to become financially stable and I think that that's great. I just don't feel like a lot of us have the correct tools to become financially stable early on in life. And as a result of that, in our adult lives, we're kind of figuring it out as we go. And that puts us at a tremendous disservice from day one. And I think the sad part about this is that most people throughout their lifetimes will be striving to be financially stable, only to get it towards the end of their career or never at all because there's always something, right? There's always something that we can't control. It could be something that no one expected, like a pandemic to shut the whole world down temporarily, budget cuts, furloughing employees, laying off employees, cutting 401ks. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that comes with just everyday life. Or it could be that rent has gone up drastically a lot more than you would have expected for it to. Gas prices going up. It might feel like there's a lot of external circumstances that keep you from becoming financially stable. And that's what I want to talk to you about in this video, because there's more that you can do about it than you think. And again, I'm mainly speaking to those between the ages of 18 and 30 in this video, because I feel like it applies to you the most. But as always, we have different walks of life. So it doesn't matter what age you are. If you're watching this video, this is going to be helpful for you. So anyway, check this out. The first step to being financially stable is by first being a stable person. And by stable, I mean consistent and reliable. For example, I've been in management for my entire career and I see this way too often. I've seen employees throughout my entire career constantly complaining about the fact that they feel like they don't make enough money. They'll ask up and down for a raise, they'll ask up and down for overtime, but in the same breath, they'll call out of work and they only work half the week. You get what I'm saying? Because I've always been in manufacturing and every manufacturing facility I've been in, every employee works half the week, but they exchange that with working 12 hour days, right? And so if you're already working only half the week and you call off half of the half a week that you're working, how often during the year are you working? Not six months, it's more like four, five months. So you have to be stable and reliable. You have to reliably understand and take your career and job seriously. You have to show up consistently, behave yourself consistently, do your job well consistently. And that way your paychecks, and this sounds like such common sense, but I'm telling you so many people get this part wrong. This is how you continue to collect paychecks consistently and get chosen for overtime consistently. And it's also how you get promoted because people notice, oh, this per this guy, this girl, she, they show up every single day to work, never complains, does their job well, gets in there, does a good job, gets out of there, comes back from break on time. So that way, when you do go for a promotion, it's not going to be like something that, oh, I don't know about this person. I mean, like, no, nah, it's going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's our guy right there. Because you're showing that you're stable. You're showing that you're reliable, that you're consistent. And the bottom line of this is you have to make good stable decisions so you can't be waking up like uh i don't really want to go to work today i'm sore uh, you know what i'll make it up on overtime overtime is never guaranteed i don't care where you work at you can't go out here buying crazy expensive things that you know you can't afford and you want to spend a thousand dollars on like a designer bag or designer clothes that you can only afford with a credit card and then proceed to spend the next six seven months paying that off does that sound like a stable decision to you? Cause it's not, and I'm not judging. I'm just telling you what I see and it's not consistent with someone who wants to be financially stable. And so I want you to make good decisions in the first place. And that's why I said I'm mainly speaking to the ages between 18 and 30, because that right there is your margin for error. That right there is where most of us make big financial mistakes early on, which are then hard to recover from when we hit the age of 40, 50. And then the later on in life you are, you might have kids, you might have a mortgage, you might have more financial responsibility, so it's gonna be harder for you to recover. So, so if you get these things in order now while you're young, you'll be good by the time you hit those older ages. If you have a choice between buying a used car and a brand spanking new car that comes with a heavy car payment, which one do you think is more of a stable decision? Definitely the used car. 
at this point, it's not about impressing anybody. It's about building up your empire from scratch. But before you do that, you have to build a foundation because being financially stable is your foundation. It's your discipline, it's your common sense, it's your stability, and it's your consistency. So you've gotta make those good decisions from day one. So you don't get into high interest debt. You have to make those stable decisions. Okay, I'm making this much a month. Let me, let me put 200, 300, 400 to the side. A stable decision is, you know what? I'm 18, I'm 19 years old, I'm still living with my parents. I got my full-time job though, so you know what? I'm gonna stack up until I'm ready to move out. And when I'm ready, I'm gonna get up out of here. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna make sure I'm good financially before I make that move. That's a stable decision. You know what? I was gonna go straight into college after high school, but you know what? I've been offered a pretty good job over here, and it's full-time. I'm making I'll be making 23, 24, $25 an hour, and the company pays for 80 or 90% of my college tuition. Having those types of options, you can then choose. You know what, instead of paying all this money out of pocket, I can let my company pay for a good chunk of this tuition. And then once I get my degree, I can move up in the company with it. Much cheaper, and your net worth will be much higher than if you did it the other way around. These are just some examples that come to my head, but I'm sure you could think of even more that apply to you. And the second part of being financially stable is taking that full ownership of your finances and controlling what you can absolutely control. You don't know how many times I've seen or heard or straight up had somebody come to me about their financial situation, but they have not yet done everything in their power that they can do to improve it. You'd be surprised at how much better off you would be if you put the processes and systems in place to improve your personal finances. And as complicated as that sounds, it's really not complicated. It's really just waking up one day. It's really just telling yourself one day that I'm making the decision to improve my personal finances. I'm not going to go through another year of barely being able to sleep at night because my money isn't right. I'm not gonna go through another year of walking on eggshells at the job because I feel like they can let me go at any minute and if they let me go, I'm gonna be screwed because I don't have any money saved up. You have to make the decision that, you know what? I'm not gonna keep stressing out subconsciously about the massive amount of debt I'm in with credit card debt and student loans and my auto loan. I'm gonna start taking care of those. I'm gonna knock them down one by one. You just have to make that decision. And the only way you can do that is if you take full ownership and you understand. You don't blame anybody else. You don't blame the government. You don't blame your job for not paying you enough. You don't blame the amount that you get taxed every single check. You have to really understand fully that the reason you were in the position you're in is because of you. And you can also be the reason that you get out of your situation. It goes both ways. Y'all getting me all fired up now. See, I, I ain't yelling at you. I'm just getting passionate about this topic because this is what I see all the time. And so what can you do in your power to control your finances? You can make sure that you make saving a priority. I made a video a while ago, it's called How to Master Saving and Budgeting Money. It didn't get a ton of views, but I don't care. It's a heavy impact video and I highly recommend that you watch it because it shows you step by step how to master that, how to master saving and how to master budgeting. If you feel like you're in such an amount of debt that you can't handle it, you have to make it a priority. Because the thing is, the first step is basically saying, hey, don't make crazy financial decisions, but most of us do and I definitely have, so I know what it's like. But step number two is for those, if you did make the mistake, this is what you do to get out of it. You have to take full control. So this is the step where you set goals for yourself. You're like, you know what? By the end of this year, I wanna have $10,000 saved. You might not even know how you wanna do it. Right now, you might only be able to save $300 per month. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with aiming extra high for your goals because you know what? Even if you only save $5,000 by the end of the year, that's still $1,400 more than what you would have initially been able to save. Because if you would have said, ah, oh, I, can't, I can't do 10,000 because I only saved $300 a month, then you only would have been able to save $3,600 in that year. But because you set the goal high, you worked extra hard and you did what you could do and you controlled what you can control, you cut back on expenses, you stopped some of the bad habits, and you were able to put away some extra money every single month or even every other month. And because of it, you were able to save $5,000 instead of $3,600. And so now you go into the next year having those strategies already preset in your brain. And next thing you know, you are saving that 10,000, 15,000 per year. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. And you could be like, you know what? I really like living on my own, but you know, this $1,400 rent is getting a bit much. So if I get two roommates, you know what? We'll be able to split it three ways. So now I'm only spending a third of what I was spending on rent. 
So now you're thinking, I can save big just by making that one adjustment. My phone bill is ridiculous. I could get down to something cheaper that's only $40 a month instead of like $150 a month. That $110 can make all the difference. It's like, you know what? I'm able to look myself in the mirror and say, you know, I have some vices. I have some financial vices that I just can't shake. I like to eat a lot. I like to go out to eat and have that good food prepared by that good chef. I like walking, I like looking good. I like walking around in that designer clothes, designer shoes. And then from making that statement, you're able to then go back through your bank account statements and you're like, ooh, I spent $200, $300 on that every single, wow. I, no, I know I didn't just spend $350 on those Jordans. And you're gonna start realizing the patterns. And when you cut back on these things, I'm never gonna tell anybody to cut cold turkey because it's really hard to do. Cut little by little, and then eventually you will be able to eliminate a bad habit. But you never if you go cold turkey, you're gonna end up splurging a few months later. It's not gonna be good for you. I know, trust me. I may or may not have done that myself. Except mine was with food. But you get what I'm saying though. Like you have to be able to be honest with yourself and make those adjustments and control what you can control. If you're budgeting, if you're saving, if you're getting out of debt every month, if you're creating plans, and again, systems, and you're telling yourself you refuse to go through another year feeling like this about your personal finances, I'm telling you, that right there is controlling what you control, and then eventually you'll be able to do it the best that you can. Because that's completely eliminating your bad habits. That's completely saying, you know what? I'm not going to eat out for a while. I'm going to just grocery shop. I'm going to cook at the house. It's saying, you know what? I'll swallow my pride and I'll have roommates over. So that way I'm not spending all of my money on rent every single month. Because let's be honest. How many of y'all feel like y'all are spending every dime you make on your freaking rent? It feels like that sometimes. Not to mention the fact that you get taxed out the wazoo just for having a job. There's more to life than that. And you gotta remember, this stuff is only temporary. But when you have a goal and when you have a priority, you have to really commit to it. You can't just, you, and this is the biggest pet peeve I have, you can't just keep saying, I wanna be financially stable, but then proceed to do something that's completely opposite to that of a person who is financially stable. You can't come to me and say, you know what? Hey, I, I really wanna, I really want some budgeting advice. I really want to learn how to save my money. I really want to learn how to stack up. And then, you know, once I get there, I want to learn how to invest and really, really make my money grow and work for me. I don't want to be working for the rest of my life. You can't come to me all fired up like that, telling me you want this, that, and the third done, and then proceed to say, you know what? I'm going to call for work tomorrow. Your priorities aren't straight. You can't, come, you can't come to anybody and say, hey, I, I really just, I want to save my money. I want to build wealth. I really just, I want to be great. And then you turn around and you go to the mall and you buy a bunch of liabilities that don't do anything. Maybe they make you look good for a bit. It might turn some heads, but that's temporary. What do you do when you're on the road and you see a really nice car? You look at it, oh man, that's a nice car, that's dope, I like that. And then you know what you do? Five minutes later, you get you know, moved on with your life. You done forgot about that car. That's the same thing that happens when you buy things that you like, either, whether for your enjoyment or other people's enjoyment, People forget about it, and, and that enjoyment isn't as much once you keep acquiring things and things over and over and over again. Again, the more things you own, the more things own you. I will never stop saying that. And so from there, you have a choice to make. Am I gonna make it a priority? Because if it was a priority to be financially stable, if you're in debt and if you know that your savings don't look the way they should, and you know that you'd be really, really hurting if you lost your job or any source of income, then you have to make it a priority to improve it. You can't just sit around, complaining about it and crying and not doing anything about your situation. You have to understand what the situation is and then you have to take the proper steps to make it better. Most of us already know what it is that we need to do. A lot of us just don't wanna do it. Whether it's, I don't wanna get out of bed and go to work, but I know I gotta do what I gotta do in order to pay these bills. You know what, I made just enough because we had that little bonus last week, so I'm gonna take the day off. That right there is removing yourself from the opportunity of getting ahead financially. In order to become financially stable, you have to be stable. Bottom line, you have to control what you can control. You can control yourself, you can control your attendance at work, you can control how you save, you can control how you budget, you can control how you pay off debt. You can control every single one of those. And what I mean by that is, based off of this paycheck, how much of this money is going to which thing? And if you can't afford to pay some of them, what bill am I gonna cut off? How am I gonna make this an actual priority? I'm telling you right now, it's got to be a priority.
I feel like one of those angry fathers telling their kids how it's supposed to be. But really though, I mean this with nothing but the best intent for you watching this video. If you're watching this video with the intent to learn how to become financially stable, because it's far easier than you think. You just gotta set your priorities straight. And once you do that, once you have your priorities straight, once you really get down to what you want in life and how you're gonna get it, you might not have all the answers right away, but the thing is you wanna set your goals and you wanna set your goals high. And even if you miss them, you're gonna get closer to them than you would have if you didn't set them high, I promise you that. But once you do that, you just maintain what you do because, because it's also common that someone gets themselves out of a jam and gets to a point where they're financially stable, their savings look good and everything, but then they throw it all away because they just revert back to their old ways. You wanna keep the good habits that you build. And I can make a whole video about both good financial habits and bad financial habits, because to me, they're both equally important and I feel like you should know both of them. And some of them are not as obvious as you might think. For example, it's a very bad habit to not check your bank account every day. But we'll get into that whenever I make that specific video. I'll go into why and all that good stuff. But you maintain it. You set systems in place. And an example of a system is, you know, I really want to save $500 a month. So what do you do at the beginning of the month? And again, watch my master budget and savings video. It'll tell you how to do this to a T without even having to think about it. But for the sake of this video, if you want to save $400, $500 a month, set automations. Set your bank account to say, hey, look, at this date, it could be the first, it could be the 15th, whatever date is best for you to do it. I'm gonna send this amount of money to my savings account and I'm not touching it or anything. You set the automations, that's the most slept on advice ever. You don't know how many coaching calls I've had when I'm like, hey, have, have you automated your savings? No, I didn't even think of that. It's, it's not something that we think about. I didn't think about it for a long time. But once I started doing it, I was like, man, if I would have been doing this from day one, I would be looking good right now. Talking about being financially stable, shoot. Because when I was 21, 22, my biggest goal in life was just to be financially stable. And I was making good money, but I looked at all the adults around me, you know, like the more adultier adults, if that is a word. The ones who just looked like they just had it all together, had the nice places, the nice cars, five figures in their bank account easily, coasting along, not really caring what happens, being outspoken at work, not worried about being uh, fired. And I, and for the longest time, I compared myself to that. And I realized, you know, I, I just gotta set systems. Like I would have been so much better off if I would have, you know what? I'm gonna automatically have it send 200, 300, $400 a month before I do anything, before I spend my money on anything. Cause I used to feel like money was coming so slow and I was saving money even slower. But the only reason I was saving money slower was because I was waiting to the last minute to save whatever I had left after I spent everything. I did it in the wrong order. You're supposed to save and then spend what, and then spend what you have left over. That's what you're supposed to do. But I was spending, 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 and then I was saving what I had left over. Which one do you think is better for your savings? You know what I'm saying? So it was a learning process for me. It's a learning process for all of us, but that is how you become financially stable. And the same thing with your debt. If you're trying to get debt paid off, use the avalanche method and set automations for the minimum payment on top of that. That way you won't miss. And the biggest thing is when you do this, it's harder for you to make rash decisions because you've already committed that money to your savings. You've already committed that money to your debt. So now ain't no, oh, Dang, I don't even have money left over to buy those Jordans. That's right, you don't. And the only way that you're gonna end up getting those Jordans is if you rob yourself of the money that's rightfully yours, which is why you have to maintain that discipline. And I think the best way to do so is by keeping a savings account of yours all the way in a separate account, like an online only account that takes like two to three business days to fully transfer back over to your bank account, because then it's definitely not gonna be easy to get stuff that you would have otherwise impulsively bought. Last tip before I let you go, if you do have an issue with impulse buying or just spending too much money at the mall or at the grocery store or whatever, you really have to think about something that you're disciplined with. Like maybe you're not disciplined with money, but maybe you're disciplined with your diet. Maybe you're disciplined with your workout routine, or maybe you're disciplined within your relationships to your religion. Like maybe with your relationships, you are so stern on, stern on being faithful to your spouse or your girlfriend or whatever, right? 
Like, no matter how many options you have out there of other men or women, you're just like, nah, you just shut them down no matter what. That's discipline. And so if you could equate that discipline with money and associate the two together, then now it's going to help you get better at being disciplined with money. It's a cool psychological trick. You should try it. I'm not saying it's 100 percent, but it definitely does have power behind it. Like, for example, if you're a religion, let's say Christianity, and you're so strong within Christianity that you don't listen to certain music, you don't eat certain foods, you don't wear certain clothes, that right there, if you can link what makes you so disciplined that to money, it can actually help you get better with money. It doesn't have to be religion specifically, but it could be anything that you have discipline in. You might be disciplined in your studies at school. What makes you disciplined? Because I guarantee you it's a reason. If you can tie that reason to money, I guarantee you your impulse buying or, you know, financial vices will start to improve, meaning you will spend far less money on them and you'll be able to put away more money for yourself. I just thought I'd say that because typically with these videos I get, what if I just have a spending problem? That right there, take that advice. But you have to take that advice kind of to the extreme though, if you really, really, really want it to work. You can't just try linking it to one thing and it doesn't work so you just give up like you actually have to really really try to improve it and you have to really want it first of all you have to really want to improve your finances and, and this is what separates those who mean what they say and those who are just saying things because they sound good people who say they want to be financially stable and actually mean it they do the actions to get there they might even go as far to hire someone to hold them accountable like your boy right here. Y'all know I got a coaching program. Come on now. Hit your boy up. But it doesn't even have to be me. It could just be anybody. Or it could be someone that they're not paying. It could be like a parent or a close friend. Like, hey, you got to keep me accountable because I'm trying to get better with this finance stuff. It's the same thing as having a gym buddy that you go to the gym with that holds you, that keeps you accountable. You keep each other accountable. That's what it's all about. So hold yourself accountable financially. Take that ownership financially, and that's how you become financially stable. Because if not, someone else is going to hold you accountable financially and take ownership of your finances. Think about that. Well, I've given you a lot to think about, so hopefully you enjoy this video and you think on this and you continue to take the steps to improve financially so you get to where you want to be. I know you can do it. I have so much faith in you. And leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this video. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.